Good evening, everyone. It's great to welcome you to this webinar. Thank you for attending. I would like to thank all the people who are coming. Uh, I know that there are some, I can actually recognize some names coming from the Pinero site. Thank you for coming. So we have current parents from Pinheiros. We have parents from Alphaville. It's great that you are here. Thank you for coming. And we also have prospective parents. So uh, I welcome you all to this webinar. It's great to have you. Uh, we are beginning now. Let me just introduce myself very quickly. My name is Marcelo Ravanal. I am currently the head of senior at uh, San Nicolas in Pinheiros. Um, and it's my pleasure to introduce uh, the two people who are going to take charge of this meeting today. First of all, let me introduce uh, Mr. Saulo Viana, who is going to be uh, who's going to be speaking first. Mr. Viana is our IB coordinator at San Nicolas. He has uh, a long experience as an IB coordinator uh, in Brazil. Uh, he's a well-established uh, IB person in Brazil. Uh, he has worked in several schools in Sao in, in São Paulo. He has also, uh, he's also working for the IB in uh, actually examining schools which are applying to be IB schools. So he has extensive experience. So we are very glad that, to have him at San Nicolas. Uh, and today he will be talking about the IB. And also I'm very happy to introduce to you, Ms. Lien Vasconcelos. She is our university's advisor at uh, San Nicolas Pinheiros. Uh, she has been working with us for a number of years now, and she is in charge of all university uh, admissions. Uh, she gives important orientation to students who want to go and study abroad. So they are going to be presenting uh, beginning now. So thank you very much, everybody, for coming. Salo, I will leave it with you now. Uh, Please, let me tell you all that uh, the presentation is going to take place. It's going to probably last between 30 to 35 minutes, no more than that. Between That's between Saul and Lien. After that, we're going to open up for questions. All right. So you, you have a, a question and answer section there where you can actually, you as participants can write your questions. Uh, and we will try to answer those questions before the end of this uh, meeting, which is this, this meeting lasts for an hour. Um, if we don't have time, if we run out of time in terms of the questions, uh, the questions are going to be recorded, of course, but they're going to be written there, and we're going to be very happy to answer those questions, put them in a document, and then circulate that document amongst all participants. So if there are any questions we don't have time to answer today in this particular webinar, then you can have access to that in a document. Okay, so thank you. Uh, and now I leave it with uh, Ms. Viana, please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Habanal. Um, so I will be actually interviewing Salo, asking him some questions about IB, but we would like to, again, as Mr. Habanal said, thank you all for coming today, this evening, to learn about the IB Diploma Program at St. Nicholas in Pinheiros. We're really excited to be here. And I think we will begin. So first question, Salo. This is probably pretty easy. What is the IB? Or maybe that's really complex. <laughs> okay, uh, thank you, Lian. Well, welcome everybody. Good evening. It's a pleasure to have you all here. IB is a very common acronym, and it stands for International Baccalaureate, which is a nonprofit foundation um, that was created in 1968 in Geneva, Switzerland. The IB offers four different programs for uh, learners aged three to 19 years of age. Perfect. Can you also tell us how international is the International Baccalaureate? Okay, that's, that's a very good question because since 1968, the IB has been growing a lot. Nowadays, the IB is present in 
in 159 countries across over 5,400 schools. So pretty international. Definitely. Can you also tell us how many programs does the IB offer? Yes, the IB offers uh, four programs. The PYP, Primary Years Program, the Middle Years Program, known as MYP, the Diploma Program, known as DP, and the Career-Related Program, known as CP. But in Brazil, uh, we schools only offer uh, the three first programs, PYP, MYP, and Diploma. Perfect. Okay, now we can distinguish. There's the International Baccalaureate, but then as you mentioned, there's the diploma program. So can you tell us what exactly is the IB diploma? Okay, the, the IB diploma was the first program created by the IB. Uh, the idea of the teachers in the International School of Geneva who were the creators of the program was to guarantee some sort of standard for um, students, European students mainly, who were studying abroad uh, because their families were working abroad. And when they returned to Europe, they wanted to make sure that people had uh, similar qualifications instead of different qualifications depending on the country. So uh, the IB is a pre-university program uh, that happened in the last two years of secondary education. Um, and it prepares students to enter universities directly without having to do any uh, entrance tests or exams. Um, in Brazil, the diploma program is the most popular program. Just to give you an idea, in our um, attendees, there are 49 IB World Schools in Brazil. Out of those 49, 37 offer the IB Diploma Program. Wonderful. Now, now that we understand a little bit more about the IB Diploma, can you talk about the actual structure of the Diploma Program? Yes. Well, in order to guarantee a standard, the structure of the IB program is the same in any school, okay? However, there might be variations of subjects because as I said, IB increased so much that there are many um, subjects offered. So basically the IB diploma structure is the following. Every IB student takes six subjects, one subject from the six subject groups, which are group one, first languages, group two, language acquisition or foreign language, group three, the humanities, group four, the sciences, group five, the mathematics, and group six, arts and electives. So uh, as you can see, every diploma student has to study two languages, that's compulsory. And they can study up to three languages. Mathematics is compulsory, and they can do up to two humanities or two sciences. Uh, these subjects are divided into higher level subjects and standard level subjects. The difference being that higher level subjects they have to have a minimum of 240 hours over the two year period. And standard level subjects, they must have 150 hours over the, the two year period, which means that students can choose uh, their higher level subjects and their standard level subjects according to their strengths. And they can focus uh, on the subjects that they are more um, strong at. Uh, on top of the six subjects, the students have the core, which call, we call the core of the IB, which uh, covers three elements, the extended essay, 
which is a written piece of work based on research on any IB subject and uh, has to have a maximum of 4,000 words. They also have a course in theory of knowledge, um, which is taught in the school over the two years. And they also have to take part in the CAS program. CAS stands for Creativity, Activity, and Service. So with the core, the IB creates interdisciplinarity and covers the non-academic part of the diploma, which is CAS. There's no grade for CAS, so students really have to touch the three elements, uh, activity, um, creativity, and community service. Perfect, that was very clear. Okay, so how does the diploma work then at St. Nicholas? Well, uh, that's a very good question because, and I'm very proud to be at St. Nicholas. As Mr. Habanao said, I have worked in many IB diploma schools in Sao Paulo. And I have also, working for the IB, visited many schools in Latin America from Panama to um, Uruguay. And I'm really proud to say that at St. Nicholas, we offer a very robust diploma program. Uh, as you can see with the slides uh, we are going to present now, um, we offer a very good range of subjects and students start thinking about the IB diploma when they are in year 10. So towards the end of year 10, they start choosing the, the subjects. And the IB diploma the, it starts in August of year 11, and it finishes in May of the year 12. So on this slide, you can see that, uh, yes, St. Nicholas has decades of experience as a school and uh, 20 years of experience with the IB diploma. We are proud to offer 22 subjects uh, for, the, for the IB diploma that students can choose from. And all these subjects are in higher level and standard level. Uh, just for you to have an idea, uh, we offer five languages at St. Nicholas. Of course, students can take as many as three, uh, but yes, we do have five uh, available. All our students go through the IB Diploma Program, which is a great advantage. We do not select students. We do not have a parallel program. They all take part of this experience. Uh, we have a personalized learning support to um, support the students because the IB Diploma is arguably one of the most demanding um, high school programs in the world. And some students find it very difficult and they need some support and we offer that. We have uh, individual career counseling, which is your part, Leanne. And I'm sure that next week when you have your webinar, you're going to present in detail what is the career counseling at St. Nicholas. Uh, our CAS program is really, really strong. Uh, the school has um, contact with many institutions in Sao Paulo. So students have a varied uh, opportunity to take part in the CAS program. And our results are very consistent and very good. So the next slide can show you um, the results. So this is the May 2021. So as you can see, uh, the average DP score in the world was 33 points, maximum of 45. At St. Nicholas, we were at 35. Uh, the DP grade, which is from one minimum to seven maximum, the world was 5.19 and we were 5.89, which is very good. In the pass rate, we are well above the world average. Last year, we had 100% pass rate in our diploma. And uh, yes, we do have students achieving very, very high, above 40 points. And uh, as you can see, only about 18% of students worldwide 
achieved between 40 and 45 points, but at St. Nicholas, that's 24%. And the bilingual diploma, which is only granted to students who take two languages as native languages, two first languages, um, in the world, that percentage is 27. At St. Nicholas, it's 98, thanks to our uh, very strong language program. And this is just for you to see that we are not just talking about this year, 2021, but if you look since 2017, the last five years, uh, you, you can see that we consistently achieve very high results, which is an indication, I don't want to say proof, but an indication that our teachers in the school is well prepared to offer every learner the opportunity to achieve their full potential. I think that's the, the last one, yes. Perfect, thank you so much, Saulo. Okay, uh, lastly, can you tell us why is the International Baccalaureate Diploma recognized and valued worldwide? It's, that's a very good question. It's not only because of the results, but it's because the academic excellence of the program, and also because the program brings uh, not only the subjects, the academic subjects, but also other elements that are related to the person. So we have the IB Learner Profile, for, for instance, with 10 attributes that value things like being courageous, being a risk taker, being a reflective person, balanced, principled. And at St. Nicholas, that IB learner profile comes from the PYP. So the minute the student enters the PYP or enters the school, these attributes um, are developed in, in the school. And by the time they reach the IB diploma program, this is part of the culture. And students, they are autonomous, they are independent, they learn how to solve the problems they face, they learn how to approach their learning, developing strategies, um, managing their time, because time is a problem in the diploma program. There isn't much time to do everything they have to do. So these are skills that they acquire when they are going through the diploma program. And uh, it's a very good preparation for university. And if you allow me to give a personal example, uh, my daughter finished the IB program three years ago. She's now uh, at university in Europe. And we were talking the other day and she was telling me how many papers she had to do for university. And she said, yeah, I'm, it's fine. It's, uh, I did so many papers at the IB, that's not difficult. But my friends at university who didn't do the IB, they are all uh, pulling out their hair because they find the paper uh, very, very difficult to, to, to write. So these are the advantages of the IB diploma program that are uh, not very clear with the final result because they are part of the student. So it's not a, a number, it's uh, a way of being that the students develop in the IB program. Definitely, I, I can't agree more just based on the number of graduates from St. Nicholas who tell us how much the IB diploma prepared them for university. And in comparison to their peers, they definitely feel more prepared. So I definitely yeah. agree. So uh, could I take advantage of your presence here tonight, although we are talking about the IB diploma program, but I mean, the IB would not be so important if there were not universities uh, that accepted the IB program. So can I ask you a few questions about the, I, the relation between the diploma and university acceptance? Absolutely. Okay, my, my first question to you is, um, do universities value the IB diploma program or uh, holders um, 
more than other diplomas? Yeah, that's a question that I get actually quite often, and it's a very good question. So I will first say that it does kind of depend on the country and the university. So for example, in the US, um, the IB diploma is actually considered college level or university level coursework. For that reason, uh, a student who is applying to university with the IB diploma and the IB diploma curriculum um, are definitely seen as stronger candidates compared to students and applicants who have a standard high school curriculum in the US. Uh, so definitely they value uh, in the US greatly the IB diploma and even more, uh, many universities will give college credits. College credits at a university in the US means that um, you, know, you have a certain number of credits that you need in order to graduate for a certain course. So if they say, okay, based on your IB results, right, after they um, graduate, they may have a six in a certain subject, a seven or a five. Each university has their criteria, but the vast majority of US universities will offer college credit to those who obtain specific results. And that means that they can move on to higher level courses instead of doing the introductory ones like the rest of their peers. And of course, because uh, classes take time, it also saves money. So I know of many universities in the US in which a full IB diploma and specific grades could actually take off an entire year of university. That's how strong and valued the IB diploma is in the US. Now, like I said, it's not the same everywhere. Um, so for example, in the UK, Canada, and the Netherlands, the IB diploma is considered equivalent to their high school, uh, national high school diploma. So there isn't any specific preference, but I think what's important is that they actually recognize it as a equivalent to their high school diploma. So just to give you an example, um, other countries, including Brazil, whose obviously the high school curriculum is really strong, but still in these countries or certain countries, the Brazilian high school diploma is not accepted on its own for admission to university or specific courses. So, um, you know, our students really do have that advantage of having access to universities all around the world without having to do additional testing or additional year of university um, before they can enter university abroad, which is what many Brazilian uh, applicants who only hold a Brazilian high school diploma have to do. Wow, yeah, thank you very much for that. As you mentioned Brazil, uh, when I started as a DP coordinator some decades ago, uh, parents always asked me, uh, when is the IB diploma going to be recognized in Brazil? And I had to say, oh, sorry, Brazil doesn't know about the existence of the IB diploma. Only international schools offer the, the IB diploma in Brazil. How is the situation now? Uh, do Brazilian universities accept uh, the IB diploma? Yes, the number of IB um, or Brazilian universities that accept the IB diploma for admission is growing in the last few years. So at the moment, we have 15 universities in Brazil that accept the IB diploma as a substitute for the vestibular. So uh, just to name a few, some of the more popular universities include Einstein, which means that, you know, you could apply with the IB diploma to study medicine, uh, SPM, FAP, FGV. Um, there's a new school called Link Business School, IBMEC, and then um, also universities that have a wider range of courses like McKenzie and Pukki. Um, each university does have their own specific requirements, uh, depending on the course or, you know, specific grade requirements, but uh, it's really, really wonderful to see how much Brazilian universities are responding to 
the demand for IB diploma candidates because they know that the graduates are really strong. Yes, very good. I mean, the, the landscape changed quite a lot from some years ago. And it's very nice to see that Brazilian universities recognized uh, the importance of the IB diploma and offer some places. Uh, and it's great for, for the families and for the learners because they can have uh, the best of both worlds. When they take the IB diploma, they can stay in Brazil and use the IB diploma in Brazil but also um, apply abroad, excellent. And now talking about applications specifically, how do students apply to universities uh, in Brazil and abroad uh, with the IB diploma program? Yes, so this is a bit of a complex question because it does really depend, but let's just say Brazil. Um, the process is actually quite simple for the majority of the universities they will ask for a minimum number of points. So again, as Mr. or you showed, uh, the maximum is 45. So university may say we require 30 points to meet the minimum entry requirements. That doesn't guarantee a place, but those are the, the minimum requirements. And they may also ask for certain um, subjects like Portuguese and maths and a specific grade. In addition to that, it does depend, but some universities may ask for a CV or resume. Some might ask for you to participate in a interview, a group interview, but overall uh, the grades really are the most important part of the application and the applicants don't have to do any additional testing like the vestibular. So I think for, for Brazil, it's pretty straightforward. Abroad, it does really depend, um, but again, you would use your uh, grades from school. So your transcript, maybe years nine to 12, this is the case for the US. You would also be sending your grades for IB. If you haven't graduated yet, they would be your anticipated grades or what we believe that you will achieve at the end. Perhaps some letters of recommendations, um, you will have to also submit some information about your extracurricular activities. You'll also have to write some essays. So the U.S. is definitely a more elaborate and complex process, but the school and myself help and guide students all the way through, no matter where they are applying. Um, you know, I helped one student who was from South Africa, applied to a South Korean university. So the possibilities really are endless. And I, I am really proud of the fact that our, our graduates are going on to so many different places around the world. Yes, I'd like to comment on that. But before, I would like to remind our participants that you can ask questions using the um, Q&A button at the bottom of the screen and people have already sent a question. So we are here to, uh, to answer all your questions. Um, thank you very much for that answer. And I kept thinking um, your webinar next week, will you give details of uh, different criteria, admissions criteria in different countries and continents and more detailed information about the application? Yes, I can provide, you know, an overview of definitely the most popular countries where our students are applying to um, the US, the UK, Canada, Brazil. So you'll get a clearer picture of what exactly is required and what the process is. Um, one thing I'll mention is that in, in the US, for example, um, or at least St. Nicholas, we operate on a Northern Hemisphere calendar. So we end in May and June, and that's also when students uh, in the US end the, their high school diploma. And for that reason, students actually will apply during year 12 uh, in the first semester or maybe second semester, but basically you're applying a whole year in advance before you will actually enter university. This is not the case for Brazil, 
where you're usually applying just a couple of months before you actually enter. So I think that's one thing um, a lot of at least local families, Brazilian families aren't aware of that it it really is a long term process and comes quite in advance and actually during their IB studies. Okay, so I'd like to invite all participants to um, return next week to attend uh, your webinar, Leanne, with those uh, very important information. Um, so I think we finished our presentation and now we're going to answer some questions um, that are in the Q&A section. So the first question, what are the characteristics or qualifications of IB teachers? Okay, that, that's a very good question. Uh, the IB has a um, quality program for every school. So every five years, every IB world school goes through evaluation. So the IB evaluates the school. And one of the uh, requirements is that every IB teacher, irrespective of the program, MIP, PYP, or DP, they, are, they receive professional development, they receive training, IB recognized training. And St. Nicholas is very good at that because not only does St. Nicholas uh, meet the, the IB requirements, but it exceeds the IB requirements, training more people, more teachers with uh, more professional development and workshops than the IB requires. So every teacher teaching in the IB must have IB recognized training. They have their degrees. So an English teacher uh, like Mr. Habanao has to have a degree in English. I am a Portuguese teacher, so I must have a degree in Portuguese. And so the science, the mathematics, the humanities teachers. And on top of that, IB recognized training. Wonderful. The next question is, what age is the best age to start the IB diploma program? Well, uh, it, it starts in the second year of the high school or secondary. And at that time, we have students with 16, 17 years of age, sometimes people with 18. But it's, if uh, students are a bit more mature, uh, they will <clears throat> face the challenges of the IB diploma uh, in a better way, but usually 16, 17 years of age. Great. Next question. Do we accept students in year 12 in the IB? Well, that's a, that's a complicated question because as I said, the structure of the IB is the same in every IB school. However, the choice of subjects is different in each school. So for instance, in Brazil, all IB schools offer Portuguese as first language. Uh, IB schools in the US uh, do not necessarily offer Portuguese or a school in Argentina does not necessarily offer Portuguese. So the students who change schools in between, they might find very difficult to catch up on the subjects that they uh, did, did not do in their first year. And also the timeline of the schools might differ. For instance, we start our extended essay in February of the first year of the IB. Some schools start earlier and some students, some schools start later. So uh, it's a case by case analysis. There is no uh, definite answer to that. Each case has to be analyzed separately. Thank you. So I'll answer this next question. Yes. Please. Do we have students applying to Australia? And how did it go? So actually in the last um, four years that I've been the university advisor here, we have not yet, actually we have had a student apply and, and they did enter, but we haven't had anyone uh, go to university. Before I became the advisor though, we did have a graduate go on to the university in Australia. Um, I actually met with them and he told me that he loves it there. And he's actually going on to do his 
uh, master's or doctorate degree. So Australia actually is, I think, one of the simplest application processes in the world. Um, I've had students just basically send their results uh, for IB because their application cycle happens after um, students graduate from St. Nicholas. And that's basically the main criteria. It's very straightforward. They don't have any additional uh, parts of the application like letters of recommendation or essays. So um, most of our students don't apply to Australia because they feel like it's really far, but I know that Australia has wonderful universities and it's, it's a great destination because it also um, offers courses in English. Um, the next question is, do all of the students at St. Nicholas automatically participate in the IB program from ninth grade and on? Okay, th this is a, a, a question that we have to consider. Uh, St. Nicholas Alphaville has the MYP. So from grade six onwards, they are in the MYP program. So it starts in grade six, and they finish at grade 10, and in grades um, 11 and 12, they do the diploma. At St. Nicholas Pinheiros, the IB diploma starts in year 11. So in, in grade nine, as the question asked, we don't have a, a DP program or an IB program in Pinheiros, but St. Nicholas Alphaville does have the MIP, which is an IB program. Perfect. And I think this next question, question was answered, but maybe let's clarify. They asked, when does the IB diploma happen each year? Uh, maybe okay. they're asking, when the exams happen. Yeah, when the exams are. Okay, um, IB exams, they happen, uh, they can happen at two different dates every year, May or November. Usually for Southern Hemisphere uh, calendar schools, they take the IB exams in November. And for Northern Hemisphere calendar schools, they take the IB diploma in May. Now in Brazil, because of vestibular exams happening in the second semester, starting in November, most schools, even the Brazilian ones that offer the IB diploma program, they moved to be a May session school. So they have the IB exams in May. As St. Nicholas is a Northern Hemisphere calendar school, uh, we sit our exams in May and the academic year finishes in June. So our academic year starts in August and finishes in June. So when the students take their IB exams, they finish high school. Great, I'll answer this next question. Does an IB diploma help in the process of securing a scholarship in the US? So this is a, a little bit of a tricky question. What I'll say is that, um, as I mentioned before, IB diploma candidates are seen very highly because it's considered a more rigorous program than the high school diploma in the US. Um, there are actually scholarships specifically for IB students. So definitely you will see that um, having an IB diploma is beneficial in the US. There are other parts of securing a scholarship though. So some for example, might ask for a range of uh, minimum IB diploma points. Um, I know of one scholarship that is for IB and asks the minimum requirement of 40 points for a student to secure the scholarship of $20,000. So um, it, I think it's, again, definitely beneficial and can definitely get our students scholarships. Um, and many of our students have gotten scholarships, not only for doing IB, but because of their other qualities like extracurricular activities they're involved in, the specific grades they have. It's a very holistic process. Um, we have a question about uh, theory of knowledge. What exactly is the nature of that subject? Okay, that's a very good question. Uh, theory of knowledge is not a philosophy course. It is an epistemology course which in common language is how do we learn? So uh, theory of knowledge explores how we learn using different um, 
types of areas of knowledge and uh, the course presents to students ways in which they can verify knowledge. So it's a very interesting course that touches base with the humanities, the sciences, the mathematics, the languages, and also other areas of knowledge uh, like tradition, indigenous knowledge. Um, and uh, it's, some students think it's philosophy, but it's not. It's basically, how do we learn and how can we check what we learn? Thank you, Salo. So I, I think we only have uh, time left for one question, but as Mr. Habanel mentioned, we will follow up and answer the remaining questions and send them to all participants. Um, and I think a lot of them are actually for me, uh, and you'll, you can hear a lot about this next week in my webinar. But one um, person is asking when the tests and essays start and when students have their grades when they apply to universities. Um, so if you're talking about the US specifically, um, the students are going to be applying in the first semester of year 12. So again, we start in August and we end in May. So many uh, universities in the US require that you apply between November and January of your final year of high school um, before you, uh, so that you can attend university in the fall or in August or September after you graduate. So again, it's a whole year ahead. Um, everything is submitted at the same time generally when you apply. So when you talk about tests and essays, um, all of that is prepared in advance before you send all of those application requirements. Um, at St. Nicholas, we start students uh, with test preparation in year 11 and also provide guidance in terms of essays and applica application process in year 11 as well. Um, Thank you, very good. <laughs> I think that's, that's it for today. Thank you so much everyone for attending the webinar about the IB diploma. Yes, if, I think Mr. Habanao is going to close it now. Yes, and there are Thank many you very questions much. that will be answered next week for sure with your webinar, Leanne. Yes, thank you very much, Lien. Thank you very much, Saulo. That was that was very, very interesting, very informative. Um, there are questions. Please let me just remind our attendees that if we did not have time to answer a question live here, we're going to take all those questions and answer them, and then we're going to circulate that to you in a document. Okay, so keep that in mind. We are answering all the questions. They're all very interesting questions. So thank you for submitting your questions. Uh, and that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm sure some of those, if you attend uh, the very interesting upcoming uh, webinar that Lien is going to be uh, uh, leading next week, then you will also be able to uh, answer that question or you, she, she might actually be able to answer that question in, at that time. All right. So again, I would like to thank everybody for attending. I hope this has been uh, helpful for you all. Uh, and it's been lovely to see you. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate your attendance today. Thank you, Saulo. I, thank you, Lien. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lien. Thank you, Marcelo. Thank you, everybody, for attending.